right, let's go ahead and get everyone in their seats, get our door shut. I apologize for the delay. It's been a very busy morning this time of year, which I'm sure most of you understand. Let's get this underway at this time. If you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just ask the uh, clerk to call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Here. Senator Carpenter. Senator Mills. Here. Senator Schickel. Senator Southworth. Here. Senator Webb. Here. Senator Westerfield. Senator Wheeler. Here. Senator Williams. Here. Senator Turner. Here. And Chair Smith. Present. Very good. Do I have any members uh, that have any announcements or any communications? Uh, any members that have any special guests this time I'd like to recognize? Well, actually, I do. My daughter, Creston Smith, is here. Crest, stand up so everybody can see you. She's visiting with Dad today, so I'm happy to have her at the Capitol. Let's give her a nice talk. Amen. All right, let's get straight into this. Uh, we're going to go in order. Uh, Senate Bill 161, uh, Senator Webb, if you have anyone that wants to come to the table with you. And just to get uh, housekeeping orders, uh, as you come to the table, if you're speaking today, please identify yourself for our records. We, we, know who, we may know who you are, but we still have to go through that. And for any members, if we have follow-up questions, just come through the chair. That way we make sure we respect all the other members. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, uh, Senator Robin Webb, District 18. I uh, thought my co-sponsor, um, Adrian, would you like to come to the table too? I thought she was here. I lost her. <laughs> um, this bill does relate to the Kentucky River Authority, and as we know, especially in our time in Frankfurt, the important role the Kentucky River plays uh, in the state uh, in the impacts of how we can make it better. I think we all should try to try to do Motion that. Motion on the bill. Would you like to say anything? I'd just like to say thank you to all of the Kentucky River Senators uh, for co-sponsoring this. I was probably one of two of the main Kentucky River Senators. We now have new people in those spots, but I'm still on the river, and we do want to keep it within our purview and not out to whoever and whatever. Thank you. Very good. I ask the clerk to call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Aye. Senator Carpenter. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator, Senator Southworth. Senator Turner? Aye. Senator Webb? Aye. Senator Westerfield? Senator Wheeler? Aye. Senator Williams? Aye. Chair Smith? I vote aye. And I, this is this bill's well overdue for a lot of us who have been fighting this for a while, so we appreciate the work on this. Um, Senate Bill 161 is approved with the expression that the same shall pass. Do you have any comments, Senator Webb? Motion for consent. A move for, consent. I make a motion. Second. Aye. All those in favor of the sign of aye? Aye. Opposed? Likewise. Very good. It carries. Thank you. Uh, actually, I'm, I, I see Chairman Gooch back here. I'm going to go ahead uh, and have Chairman Gooch come up with his bill. Uh, that way I know he's probably got committee meetings and stuff that he's got to get back to. And if not, he needs to buy me dinner this evening. So anyway. <laughs> Chairman Gooch, as always, it's good to have you in front of our committee. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank well, you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, uh, House Bill 222 uh, just reauthorizes the Hazardous Waste Management Fund. It's been in existence since about 1984. Um, it's a fund that's there uh, to clean up hazardous waste sites in the event that whoever may have caused that is not able to do it or not in business. Motion on the bill. Second. Second. I believe you got the votes, unless you want to keep talking. No, no. I ask the clerk to call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Aye. Senator Carpenter. Senator Mills, Aye. Senator Schickel, Senator Southworth, Aye. Senator Turner, Aye. Senator Webb, Aye. Senator Westerfield, Senator Wheeler, Aye. Senator Williams, Aye. Chair Smith. I vote aye. This uh, House Bill 222 is approved second. with the expression second. that the same shall pass. What do we have? Oh, for consent. We already got you at consent. So all those in favor with consent on House Bill 222? Aye. 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 Opposed likewise? Uh, just a quick note, um, my daughter has pretty much grown up here, and they all my kids refer to Chairman Gooch as Uncle Gooch. So it's good to see <laughs> Uncle Gooch here with us. Thank, Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. All right, All right next, let's go back to, uh, we have Representative Freeland here. We'll go to 160. Gentlemen, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, House Bill 160 is uh, clarifying language. It's uh, relating to a bill we passed a few years ago in the House and Senate. And I'm pleased to say that uh, we've worked together to reach a consensus with all in uh, with our uh, business environment and also our uh, government regulators. And um, I've got Steve Robertson is here with us today and to help answer any questions. And Steve, if you would, you can say a few words, please. Sure. Steve Robertson with Frost Brown Todd. Um, yeah, this has been two years in the works. We've uh, we've had a, uh, a great experience working with the Energy and Environment Cabinet to fix some problems with the original bill. And also, we've been delighted to work with Tom Fitzgerald, uh, former director of uh, Kentucky Resource Council, uh, who testified in support of the bill in the House. It's one of these things. It's just a, a, a technical cleanup. Um, and um, thank you. Thank you. Motion second, but we also have uh, someone signed up to, to speak. Um, Tom, Rep, Mr. Fitzgerald, do you have anything you want to yeah. add to it? All right, and at this point, do we have any questions? All right, we have a motion and a second standing. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Aye. Senator Carpenter. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Schickel. Senator Southworth. Aye. Senator Turner. Aye. Senator Webb. Aye. Senator Westerfield. Senator Wheeler, aye. Senator Williams, aye. and Chair Smith. I vote aye. Uh, this bill, House Bill 160, is approved with the Most expression percent. the same shall yeah. pass. We have a motion made by and a second by, I guess, Turner and Wheeler. Yes. Turner and Hooch here with us. Uh, at this time, I'll ask the, all those in favor of the sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. We have you on consent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate uh, my colleagues moving along so quickly. We're about caught up. Uh, next, we have uh, House Joint Resolution 37. And uh, so we do have a substitute on that. Has the substitute been handed out to all the members? All right. If you, for, if all you members, please take a look at the substitute. All right, before we get started, let's go ahead and make a, get a motion and a second to adopt the substitute for you. Motion. We're speaking to that. We have, a, have a motion, a second. All those in favor of the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. All right, now we're going to be speaking to the substitute, and we'll turn it over to you all, please. Thank you, Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Representative Jared Ballman, House District 28, and I believe you know... Tom Fitzgerald. Uh, Tom Fitzgerald, Kentucky Resources Council. Thank you again. Uh, it's a privilege to be here before you today, and, and I'm also glad to report uh, that that this House Joint Resolution has path, passed both the uh, House Committee and House floor unanimously, um, and it is what we are hoping to be the, the last and final step in eliminating reformulated gasoline from Jefferson County uh, and areas of Oldham and Bullitt County as well. And, and really, we're, we're very close to, to the point where we can do that, but the EPA is dragging their feet and taking the, the final steps and, and signing off on the adjustments to the SIP so we can remove reformulated gasoline. Uh, we want to we want to remove reformulated gasoline before the next SIP is filed. We want to remove it uh, upon approval of the EPA uh, of the the plan that we put in place. Um, and so, really, that's what this resolution is calling for: that the EPA sign off. Motion on, on the bill. Have a motion and a second on the bill. <clears throat> Do we have any uh, comments or questions at this time? All right, so this motion will be on the bill as amended by the uh, committee substitute. Uh, ask the clerk to call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Aye. Senator Carpenter. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Schickel. Senator Southworth. Aye. Senator Turner. Aye. Senator Webb. Aye. Senator Westerfield. Senator Wheeler. Aye. Senator Williams. Aye. Chair Smith. I vote aye. So the, the passage of House Joint Resolution 37 as amended by the committee substitute is uh, approved favorable with the expression that the same shall pass. <coughs> Thanks, sir. Uh, we want to move for consent. We have a motion. Second. All those in favor of the sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. We have you on consent. 
Thank I you, mean, Mr. Chairman. Been lucky for these guys. <laughs> Thank uh, you, members of the committee. Thank you all. <clears throat> all right, we have um, House Joint Resolution 69. Uh, Representative Duvall, there, see here? There he goes. Yeah. Very, very impressive fellow here. I got a chance to talk to him a little bit this week, and he has worked extremely hard <coughs> on this important piece of legislation. Good to have you in front of our committee. Thank you, and good morning. Thank you, uh, members of the committee and Mr. Chairman. Um, Robert Duvall, uh, representative for District 17. So I'm going to be talking about House Joint Resolution 69. Uh, and what this does is it directs the governor to recognize the newly created Board of Radon Safety as the state entity to receive and administer uh, the EPA state indoor radon grant funding uh, in accordance with statute. Uh, by way of background, radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer in Kentucky, and it literally kills thousands each year. Uh, the unfortunate situation has been that the, our state's radon program has been in disarray for years uh, with little enforcement over the certification of radon testing and mitigation contractors without the robust public health education program that's needed. Um, so therefore, last year, uh, Representative Kevin Bratcher sponsored House Bill 77, and it passed uh, with bipartisan uh, support, uh, 90 to 2 uh, in the House, 37 to 0 in the Senate. And the governor signed that law, um, in, signed it into law uh, March 31st, 2022. So it was a bill that everyone supported uh, because it really is, is good policy for, uh, for Kentucky. Uh, but what it did, basically, it put us on a path toward a more comprehensive state radon program through the creation of an independent board of radon safety in, in the public protection cabinet. Uh, but the funding, the key funding mechanism to oversee the enforcement and programming uh, was never transferred from the Department of Public Health over to the new board, uh, as House Bill 77 directed. Uh, so as previously referenced, that this funding is from the EPA's state indoor uh, radon grant, commonly called SURGE, the SURGE program. And so uh, KRS 309.434 specifically directed these SURGE funds to be administered by the new Board of Radon Safety. Um, however, after the EPA learned of the passage of House Bill 77, uh, it asked the governor to certify the new radon board as a state entity that has legal authority to receive those funds uh, as required by the EPA's regulatory process. Uh, but the governor declined to certify the Board of Radon Safety, safety motion as— Motion on the bill. Second. We have a motion and second. Any members having any questions? All right, seeing none, I ask the clerk to call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Aye. Senator Carpenter. Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Schickel. Senator Southworth. Aye. Senator Turner. Aye. Senator Webb. Explain my yes vote. Please go ahead. I want to thank you for bringing this uh, legislation. And Mr. Chairman, I'm a little partial to optometrists since my dad was one, but. Thank you, thank you. Senator Westerfield. Aye. Senator Wheeler. Aye. Senator Williams. Aye. Chair Smith. I vote aye. The uh, House Joint Resolution 69 is uh, approved favorably and with the expression that the same shall pass. Thank you. Do we want to do consent on this one as well? Yeah, motion second. 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 All those in favor of the sign of aye? Aye. aye. Opposed likewise? Motion carries. Thank you again for your work on this. Thank you very much. For All right, now we're going to do 139. We got this uh, got this new guy, Senator Mills, I guess. I've yes. heard a lot about him. Very sharp guy. Sharp dresser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was <coughs> really shocked. I just filed this resolution uh, let me introduce myself, Robbie Mills, uh, State Senator, 4th District, Northwest Kentucky. Uh, I filed this resolution just really in support of, uh, of the uh, gas industry and, and the, to support uh, gas appliances. Uh, if you remember uh, three or four months ago, there was a little brouhaha in the, the media talking about uh, gas stoves and possibly the alleviating gas stoves. And I just wanted to be on the record that uh, Kentucky supports on the natural bill. gas and uh, gas appliances. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second on the bill. Do we have any questions? Any comments? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. 
Uh, permission to explain my no vote, Mr. Chair? Please do. Uh, so I want to say that I have a gas stove. I know lots of people that have gas stoves. Um, but looking at this, this is a resolution that's supposed to be about the safety of gas range stove tops. And I don't see anything in the resolution data wise that talks about the actual safety. And reading between the lines, I think that this is probably um, it's directed to go to the federal government, probably as part of their efforts to look into if they're going to regulate gas stove tops and how they might regulate ga gas stove tops. Just in terms of process and procedure, I think this body would be better served to wait and see what the data they collect says, look and see what a potential um, regulation says before weighing in on one side or the other. But I certainly um, appreciate the effort, and I'm going to respectfully vote no. Senator Carpenter, Senator Mills, Senator Schickel, Senator Southworth. Explain my yes vote. Please go ahead. I have to say this is the oddest resolution I've seen this year. And I was a little bit like, what, when I saw it on the agenda? And I can't say that I love it because, honestly, I don't like the smell of gas. And I do know, though, especially like all of the Amish people down where I'm from originally, have all gas appliances. I mean, gas refrigerators. I mean, it's, it's amazing, some of the stuff. And so I think there's obviously a kind of a point you probably get it make, although I would be more interested in a little thicker uh, data myself to find out what this really is. Um, we definitely need to get people help with pilot lights that seem to leak smell and things. It's a total health hazard. But in any event, I will support the effort because if it's getting to be an issue, we might as well get in front of it, like not be last, like everything else. Thank you. Senator Turner. Aye. Senator Webb. Aye. Senator Westerfield. Aye. Senator Wheeler. Aye. Senator Williams. Aye. And Chair Smith. I vote aye. <clears throat> Senate Resolution 139 uh, is approved favorable as the expression the same shall pass. Now, do we want to also do consent on this one? No. 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 Oh, gotcha. No. Gotcha. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. I apologize. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a no vote. Yep, you got a no vote, so we're going to, you got to speak about it on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, until the gavel hits, it's not done. All right, guys. Well, listen, we've done, I appreciate everyone moving very quickly today, especially this last uh, week. This could possibly be our last meeting, but um, so we'll wrap it up here uh, with Senate Resolution 49. This is going to be one, part of the nomination duties required by us as we move uh, nominees to the floor. This is the vetting process. So this is the point that we have to ask the tough questions and make sure that whatever action is taken here uh, does not come back to reflect poorly on our board or as a Senate and the General Assembly as a whole. So uh, we're going to go through some questions as we have our candidate come forward. And uh, then if you have any other questions, please come through the chair. Senator Adams, you want to come and uh, introduce your guest for us? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, committee. And I'll just, I'll be brief because I'm popping in and out of meetings, but I wanted to introduce uh, Mark Nethery, who is the person I have sponsored for the 3rd District Fish and Wildlife. And um, let me just tell you how I got to know Mark is our new bird dog is a field bred English Spaniel and she's the smallest of all the bird dogs out there and uh, he gave me some nice books on how to train her and um, so we just got to be friends over that so anyways I um, have enjoyed my friendship with Mark and um, I guess I'll turn it over to him he's a he'll do great and um, I'm gonna pop out so thank you very much mr. chairman and committee members Thank you, Senator Adams. Uh, of course, Senator Adams had a German short hair pointer, uh, and then she had to trade down, but that's okay. We, we, we will not hold that against you today, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Icon for us and identify yourself by our records. Push. Yeah, just there. Is that okay? Yeah, good. Mark Nethery, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, third district appointee. All right, very good. Now finish your comment about the dogs. We're, we're I was going to say, that, yeah. you know, that German short hair comment. My my dogs all have long tails. Oh yeah. Well, I, I saw her 
dog, and I thought that honestly was too small to be a bird dog. Turns out these things are actually pretty good. Yeah, they can be. They can All right, be. guys, well, let's get get this knocked out as quickly as we can. Uh, this uh, What's important here for us is that we find good candidates to fit all the different roles that we have to, to pass the nominees up for. So we're going to go through a series of questions with you sure. to help you to explain yourself to a lot of the members up here so we understand you better as we move this nominee to the floor. This process today uh, – would send you to the floor, and then you still have to have your, your floor vote. Correct. I understand. Uh, as we go through the rules that are set and forth by us or statute, there's really not much guidelines for what uh, we require. But one of the ones are, and I'll just simply read it to you, is that any person that we put forward uh, has to have a record where they have not been convicted of a felony offense in Kentucky or any other state of law in the United States. You have to – that would make you ineligible. Have you mm -hmm. ever been convicted of a felony? No, sir. Okay. Uh, well, let's go through these. Is there anything uh, in your background uh, that would be problematic for any of the members up here if they put your nomina nomination forward that would be brought to their attention that would make them uncomfortable or you uncomfortable? Uh, no, sir. And I'll, I'm sure that boards and commission has done their vetting. I'm sure the governor's office has done their vetting. And most likely the, the president Stivers has done his vetting out of, out of the office as well, too. But in addition to that, some of the roles that I currently hold today and have held in the past required not only state vetting, but federal vetting. I know for a fact I've been vetted by the FBI on numerous occasions and even as, as far around the, world, the globe as Scotland Yard. Um, to my knowledge, I have nothing in my background whatsoever that anybody could ever be embarrassed. Uh, my background was, was vetted when I was uh, by the FBI when I was uh, nominated by uh, Senator McConnell to the Udall Foundation. Um, to that point, I know they even went through my neighborhood knocking on my neighbor's doors because I got a phone call saying, there's somebody asking a lot of questions about you. So, no, sir. The short answer is absolutely not. All right. Very good. Um, and none of these questions are made are designed to make anybody feel uncomfortable. No, that's okay. So, okay. Uh, have you participated in any uh, meetings? There, there's a a thing that keeps coming back to me, and I'm sure some of the members may have heard this as well, but there uh, is some story out there that a lot of the people that were nominated for this role were asked in confidence if, if they were appointed to it, that they would uh, move to remove the current commissioner, Rich Storm. Was there any potential that the governor or any of his staff ask you? I'm glad you asked that question because I was going to bring that up sooner or later. Because, because you've heard it as well. I, I've heard it as well, and I've been asked several times anyway. I don't want to – three, four times perhaps. I understand. Here's the honest, unequivocal answer on that. No. Um, I can't say, because I wasn't there, but I can't say what was discussed with any of the other appointees. There were three people in the room uh, when I met with the governor, the governor, myself, and the heads of head of boards and commissions. At no point was there ever any discussion of that whatsoever. In fact, my character makeup, and I think the only one up there that probably has had any dealings with me as Senator Senator Webb. Um, and I think she, I hope she would say I'm a reputable, honest person. Um, but my character makeup wouldn't allow me to do that. I can't, how do I want to say this? I've had maybe five interactions with Commissioner Storm. One professionally when I was asked to deliver uh one or two, two or three resolutions from the, the State League of Kentucky Sportsman Convention. Um, other than that, third district League of Kentucky Sportsman Christmas parties. The conversations all have all been cordial. They've all been, you know, that's a nice vest you've got on there, things of that nature. Um, I would be extremely hypocritical to sit here today and say that without any – real experience with an individual to go on there and condemn that person so hopefully that answers your question but that conversation is not taking place with me between the governor between boards and commissions or anybody else for that matter and thank you and like i said i you'd heard it as well oh yeah as absolutely I, I probably starting about three or four weeks ago i heard it and the point for us is, is, as you know, you've been around this for a while. Fish and wildlife for us has been a little bit bumpy for us members that have been here over a couple of decades. Sure. And we don't want to go back to that. 
It's been uh, bumpy for the sportsmen. Yeah, it's, it has been. And as a sportsman myself, getting caught up in the different groups and the politics of it. Right. There is one goal for us today, and that is that as we go forward, we want to get as much of that politics out of this stuff and get back to hunting and fighting the other battle with barcodes on ammo. We have other issues that we care about as sportsmen to make sure. So that, that's the whole purpose of our questions is to make sure that, sure. that we're putting people in that are going to help us for the future and not go back and address some of the stuff in the past. I understand. All right. And I, my third question for you is, are you currently, is there any ongoing litigation or anything between you and the Fish and Wildlife? No. Government Aids? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. How would you describe your current relationship with your fellow members uh, there at, at Fish and Wildlife? <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of interaction uh, with the folks in Fish and Wildlife today. Uh, in my years past, when I served uh, three terms as the League of Kentucky Sportsman president back in 2010 to 2013 approximately, um, I had an extremely good working relationship. Uh, I forged not only working relationships, but I forged friendships out of those relationships that Many of them still exist today, even though some of those folks, well, a lot of those folks have now moved on down the road. Commissioner Steve Glenn, uh, who was chairperson at the time when I uh, took over as, as president, um, you know, he just texted me yesterday. He said, good luck on your hearing. I didn't even know at that point I had a hearing. He, <laughs> that's how I found out about it. And uh, he said, let me know how you do. I want to come to your, I want to come to your swearing in. So, uh that's probably the best example. Stuart Ray, who who served, who's a friend, uh, he and I actually ran against each other or ran simultaneously for the third district commissioner. We're still friends today. We just went hunting together about two weeks ago on my place. Uh, Karen Waldrop, who's now with Ducks Unlimited, we had a great relationship. We still touch base every now and then. Um, John Gassett, who, depending on who you talk to, you might get different answers, but um, as league president, I was able to mend fences between the department and the sports people and supported. We worked together to support the constitutional amendment, the right to hunting and fishing. And we worked extremely well together, uh, endorsing and bringing in the new Sandhill crane season at that time. So, you know, I have really no interaction with, with the current commissioners. Ralph Swallows, who's the, the current seated third district commissioner. I've got his phone number in my phone. He'll take my phone calls. We'll have conversations. I, I, I don't like adversarial relationships. They don't serve anybody well. So, you know, I don't know. Hopefully I've answered your question. No, it, it is, and I appreciate that. I know these are, you know, a lot of these are subjective, and, and uh, so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm putting them to you uh, the best way I can. And my second one is <clears throat> there are, you know, social media anymore, these cell phones and mm -hmm. all this stuff has changed the world. And uh, I think all of us have probably put stuff on there that we wish we had not, or maybe we, we were glad we did, but there's a lot of presence anymore of social media, radio shows. You participate in a lot of these and you made a lot of comments uh, out there. Um, and I can tell from some of them, I've gone through some of the dialogue as we have to have to vet it. Uh, your frustration and anger about some of the stuff that you know that you feel like maybe sportsmen aren't being presented represented and some of the stuff out there but i guess as i look through this uh, on the social media um you know there's there's a lot of good stuff out there thoughtful stuff there's some angry stuff and can, some concern and i got a a, a letter uh, sent to me earlier today uh, from the director uh of the fifth from the fish and wildlife i guess they do the uh um, the Facebook site, the website, social media. I mm -hmm. apologize, I'm, I'm not doing a good job. But this is his quote to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, with my current role as director, I'm responsible for our social media and had to spend several hours uh, clearing past posts that were negative and false uh, from Mark and several others. And it was such a disaster that our board had to meet and vote to completely change how our site handles comments. Uh, end of quote. Um, do you want to respond to that? I'll respond the best I can. Um, in, and somebody might help me here with a date, but I'll just use the I'll just use the scenario when prior to the election of President Trump, um, well, prior to the election of President Trump, I watched social media, Facebook. That's the only social media I participate in. Uh, I was really became disgusted with the, with the 
language, with the attitude, with the vitriol that I thought very good friends. Uh, I just couldn't believe some of the things that came out of their mouth. And I was either going to get off social media or I was going to try and do something positive. So I'm just going to say approximately six months, six months to the, prior to the election of, of Trump as president, I made a decision to only try and do something positive. Now, I honestly can't sit here and tell you what I did four years prior to that, but I can, but I can tell you what I did going forward from that. I've got a very simple routine. Every morning when I get up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock, uh, for my doctor, I log my previous day's meals. That's supposed to help me lose weight. I'm not sure if it's really working or not. And, and I check my daily calendar of what, I need to, of what I've got on my schedule that day. And the last, the absolute, and many times it's the first thing, is I, I put a positive post out there for the day. And I get a lot of comments, a lot of positive comments about that. And it's just, you know, when I, when I hear back how positive those things are or, or that it really helped me today, that makes me feel good. Um, I'm aware of comments that other people have made on social media, which is what maybe Commissioner Lillard is referencing. But uh, he is, quite frankly, throwing me in a pool with people that I don't make comments like that. Um, again, I go back to what I said earlier. It, it, it serves no purpose. You can't – social media is great if you want to show – pictures of your dogs, the, the meal at the restaurant. But to ever get on social media and try and change someone's opinion to even present facts, as factual as something may be, no one ever believes it. It's social media. So, you know, my response to that is show me and you'll probably get an apology from me. But uh, to my recollection, and again, I have seen some very, very strong language on on that website or on that Facebook page, I guess. Uh, that's not Mark Nethery. All right, very good. And that's why I preface it is that people <clears throat> will say all kinds of stuff in there and, and or they'll say something completely out of context. And we wanted to be be fair with you, but I couldn't not divulge that, that information that was no, sent to me. That, and I'm not sure who else received uh, some of that stuff as well. Um, let me ask you. Let me <clears throat> just. Can I share something with yep, you very quickly? Please, please do. Let me just. Let me just. To my point. Okay. Uh, if I can operate my phone, which a couple of you all learned that even when I when I send emails, I make a mistake, and I apologize for that. I think there were two of you all I misreferenced. Um. My comment that I posted very first thing this morning: never compromise truth for the sake of getting along with people who can only get along when they agree. That was today's quote. So, and I and I do it randomly as I scroll through my phone. One pops up. I thought it was very apropos today. I'm going to sit here and tell you the truth. And I, I'm not smart enough to tell a lie because I can't make enough of them up to cover up the first one. And we appreciate that. It's not it's not comfortable. That's why we want you to be. You know. Oh, I'm very fun. Uh, let's see. I actually I have a question. Uh, Senator Webb has a quick question. I don't want to interrupt your, your you. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I've got s several things to talk about. <clears throat> Excuse me, because people have asked me to ask some questions because my familiarity with the process. And, um, you know, I'm a member of those sites too. League of Sportsmen, several districts, been on them a number of years. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I've gotten <clears throat> several communications from past commissioners, once again, because some of them raised me and some of them, you know, I, I've worked with through the years and they've not been positive, Mark. And, and I'll, this committee's heard me for years saying that sportsmen's battles, I've mediated several issues for fish and wildlife right. and sportsmen's groups through mm -hmm. the years from crossbows to seasons. And <clears throat> because I feel like sportsmen's issues should be vetted in private, you know, amongst ourselves where, uh, we all have the basic North American model goal in mind, and, and we just really want to do our thing and, and historically leave politics out of it. And uh, so that's that's where I've always been. But certainly, you know, there's been some, uh, I think the Courier Journal did an article uh, regarding the Dr. Angel issue with you, uh, 20-ish. 
somewhere and, like that yeah yeah and and that you know the uh trying to remove doc angel and i think there was no substantiated misconduct by doc angel in that particular well issue. actually if i can correct you senator um commissioner angel at the time uh he filed suit against the league of kentucky sportsmen naming me and another gentleman who was a director at the time or had been a director at the time uh it wasn't um it, 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 he filed suit for uh, libel defamation of character to use the correct term um there was never any proving of that. He did get a settlement out of it by the insurance company. Um, he claimed that uh, at a nomination meeting, and, and Doc Angel has passed away, and I don't want to speak ill of him. I'm just stating the facts. He claimed that in my case, I had gone around the nomination meeting with a copy of a citation he had received and was telling people not to vote for him. And that was absolutely 100% incorrect. In fact, I attended that meeting with Stuart Ray, Commissioner Stuart well, Ray. And there, you know, there's seven both sides. But my point is, we could sit and rehash all this stuff. But well, I just want to make sure is, that there has been we conflict. put the facts out Yeah, there. well, I mean, but we're going, you know, the Courier wrote the article. I just, you know. We all know how the Courier writes articles sometimes. I understand. <laughs> However, uh, you know, I also remember that uh, that time. And, and it kind of just correlates with what the chairman talked about, social media, and the fact that it, what I've received and probably several other members from former commissioners and others it's just uh, talking about, um, you know, like throwing bombs at, at, at the fish and wildlife at, for particular issues through the years and, and then having those interactions. Uh, and I understand it's not been perfect, and I understand I've criticized them sometimes too. And and but I understand this. But again, my my main concern is sportsmen's issues be settled among sportsmen, that uh, we don't necessarily create issues or air people's dirty laundry on social media. I have seen some of that in in my participation being a member of some of those sites through the years, in uh, in that. Uh, you know, it's easy to say things we regret sometimes on, I, I have a usually 24 hour rule, but uh, so I think, you know, I, I, but I just wanted to be clear that I've received communications from past commissioners that I really admire and respect and from league members, um, you know, I've got a 1950 something league handkerchief in my office. So I grew up in the league. My dad grew up in the league. I respect the league. And I know that sometimes it's like siblings, you know, fighting like Absolutely. siblings. And eventually we come together. But, um, you know, these are the concerns that I have regarding that. But I have a couple other questions that uh, have been presented to me that I'd like to present as well. Okay, I tell you what, I think we have two more. <clears throat> and uh, then at that point, uh, I'll open it up to uh, all the other members out there so just give me one second make sure we get these covered M mark let me ask you who would you say speaking about doc angel and all these people that we we know and um have served with and hunted with and many others out there um of course you know sportsmen are like sailors they have very strong opinions so we get to hear a lot about uh what they're for and what they're what they're against but with that said who would you say that you've served with uh, in fish and wildlife that you would see as a role model to you? Somebody that would help us understand the type of guy you are by, by somebody that you've seen, that we've worked with, that you really admire, think they've got the right Well, mindset. I would. I mentioned uh, Steve Glenn earlier, Stuart Ray. Um, as far as, you know, as far as the commissioners go, oh, um, gosh, I can't believe I'm going to forget his last name. Um, Doc Rich, um, he was an absolute gentleman and a pleasure to work with. And I'll never forget my first Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting that I came as a league as a league president. And Doc Rich came up to me, took me off to the side, shook my hand, welcomed me there, just you know, made me feel like I was supposed to be there. Um, you know, a person can only have so many role models, I guess. But those were all folks that served. I think well the sportsmen um they looked for compromise and and you know sometimes the decisions are not always popular but 
as Steve Glenn and I had that discussion, he said, "Hey, sometimes we're not going to we're not going to agree, but but let's agree to disagree and walk away and still be friends about it." And I think those are very admirable words. All right, very good. Uh, let's see, I think we've only got one more here. Oh, um, <clears throat> so obviously we've had problems, and and we're trying to get. Uh, you know, fish and wildlife really focus on the sports issues. My thing is grouse. I mean, I'm, I've been on them all the time with my guys down there from Vonsel to Doug uh, Hensley and, and all of them to try to bring it back. So, you know, we really do care about the issues. But the structure of the way fish and wildlife is, you saw with House Bill, what is it, 394, where we, the General Assembly had to step in a couple of years ago and try to wade in the middle of this to help the fish and wildlife really truly stand alone. And the structure over there is such that you have the commissioner as the head and Correct. you have the board and stuff with them. Um, but in your role, do you see yourself in a sort of a different role as a board member going through the chairman or commissioner? Or do you see yourself as going around straight to the governor? So you, instead oh. of kind of reporting to the commissioner, no. you um, go straight to the governor. You know, I, I think what you're, you might be alluding to, and don't let me put words in your mouth, but the liaison position. Okay, so let, let me talk about that for a minute. Um, somebody put my name in the hat for that, and it caught me at a time when I was looking for something to do to serve the sports people. It was something different. Um, I have had served my time in the league and really felt like I had done as much as I could for the league and for the third district as well. Um, so I accepted that. Uh, it's an unofficial position. It's not in the Constitution. Uh, quite frankly, I think I've probably had mm, maybe two meetings with the governor. One was introductory. The other was to discuss sentiments on a, a sportsman sentiments on some legislation. Uh, that's been the extent of it. Uh, you know, if I if if I'm confirmed and I'm sitting in that third district commissioner chair, my obligation at that point is to the sports people of the third district to communicate with them as effectively as I can possibly communicate on issues that are that are at hand uh, that the commission that the commission and the department are addressing and then carry that information back to the commission and the other eight commissioners sitting around that table um, no it, it's we have a job to do we have a we have a business to run so to speak it's about an 80 million dollar a year business um, and if I could I, I appreciate yeah. that that was and the reason I asked and there's more here and I'm afraid we're gonna run out of time but I had gone through uh, the, the Jim Strader interview you had done on, on November the 28th and was looking at some of the comments uh, that you had made in there, and, and that was one that, that we wanted to really get firmed up because we don't want any more problems over fish and wildlife, and we want this, the structure to work, and if that doesn't work, the General Assembly has been more than willing to step in, as we proved with House Bill 394, to give guidance, but we'd like to have a couple, couple years of, of having peace at, at Fish and Wildlife, so we don't want to set up – <clears throat> and in, indirectly, another go around. No, the commissioner. It's going to create us more headaches and more tails. We want the structure to work, and if that structure doesn't work, the general assembly can fix that. But that's that was one of the ones that I was had, had read some of your comments there with it and wanted to let. Like I said, well, let me. Paper doesn't always convey what yeah, these thoughts are. So. I, you know, I ask uh, when I received the appointment. The, probably the very first question I asked was. What about the liaison position? Is that a conflict of interest? What do we need to do about that? And the answer I got back was it's not a conflict of interest, but you can do whatever you want. Um, if that if that is a deciding factor, being the lia sportsman's liaison, if that's a deciding factor on whether I get confirmed or not, I absolutely, uh, I guess to further answer your question, I have absolutely no problem relinquishing that position. Okay, we have gotten, thank you for saying that. We've got members that are that have got to go to the other committees. Senator Wheeler, do you have No, no, I was just telling you I've got to get in there. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, Senator Webb, please. Um, about the liaison position, because I, as an attorney, we play by rules of the appearance of impropriety. And uh, there's an, another uh, appointee who is a dear friend of mine that also, he works for the governor. And he's his uh, papers haven't been nobody's sponsoring him at this point i assume that's the reason why but uh the legate you when did you accept the liaison position i think that was okay we're in 23 right now i think it was november of 21 
And you stated your role with him in the governor's office is communicating a couple times with the governor? At, yeah, at most. Well, I mean, I'm president of the Sportsman's Caucus. Many members are on this committee. I mean, did, you never communicated with any of us regarding the legislation, did you? No, don't believe so. And was it the legislation, uh, was it my bill uh, re in regarding the autonomy of Fish and Wildlife? And be, we, we have a follow-up this year on? Yeah, to be honest with you, I, uh, honestly, I really don't remember. Uh, there were a number of bills that year. Um, it may have been, there was a bill, I think, last session coming out of the House. And I honestly, I don't recall all the details of that bill. Probably right Ed now. Massey's bill. That Might have been. It ended Might up have been. Yeah. Rewriting. Well, then there I was filed, a lot. Of, I filed a bill in response to that. Did you all discuss that? <sighs> Senator, I don't think so. Uh, do you have any problem? Uh, I assume you, uh, with the bills that I've filed uh, and have pending now and passed last, this body passed last year with the help of mem many members on this committee regarding the autonomy of fish and wildlife to try to keep it fairly autonomous in procurement and other issues from the executive branch? You know, that's a difficult question to answer, but I'll answer it. Um, I get concerned. I'm going to answer it this way. I get concerned about checks and balances with an uh, agency that has an $80 million a year budget. So, uh, you know, there needs to be a watchful eye somewhere. Now, where that watchful eye lands, I'm not sure. And I'm sitting on the outside you know, giving you that answer without knowing everything that's going on on the inside. Uh, your bill this year, I think, 45 pages long? It's a cleanup bill mostly, but, but it regards yeah. primarily the elk project is the urgency and right. procurement so and we can get I've had food no, at Camp Webb. And, yeah, and I've had no conversations <laughs> at all regarding regarding your bill. Okay. Uh, the governor doesn't like my bill, okay? Okay. I, okay. Uh, and so what kind of position would that put you in if we pass, you know, as a potential commissioner? in being his liaison with the sportsman and conducting business on the fish and wildlife, which may not be consistent with the executive position. Well, so the liaison position, uh, I don't know if I can explain this okay. adequately, but I'll do my best. I, I really view the, the liaison position as a one-way street, meaning it's information from the sports, from the sports people to the governor, what they're, what they have concerns about. Um, not the governor issue, issuing mandates or dictates the other way around. Does that make sense? Well, I, I'm kind of doing a poor job on explaining that. I appreciate that. that. I just, I just, that it's kind of uh, could be problematic to me in my experience in trying to get communications with the executive branch on these issues. Well, uh, and as I said, you know, and I asked the question because I was concerned if there was a conflict of interest in, in regard to that. Um, to be quite honest, it hasn't really been that fulfilling of a position uh just one more about the election process how many candidates were there in your district i think there were five and four or five you had and uh did they vote count votes had to have six had to have six okay. yeah okay. so no there was no there were no vote it was there was no vote who were the other uh, individuals on the ro roster? um i was the first nominee and then the current commissioner uh ralph swallows Charlie Zwischenberger, boy, I struggle with that name, mm -hmm. um, who has reached out to me since then. We met and just talked that night. He's a nice young gentleman. And then uh, Rusty Gaylor, who was a past commissioner. Okay. I just, I, I was out of the state hunting when y'all had your meeting, and I just never followed up on that. But And, and you really made me struggle to bring all four of those names out. <laughs> uh, I think uh, – I think that's all that I have at this time, and I appreciate you, Mark. You're welcome. Mark, let me ask you. We have asked you a lot of questions. We haven't let you do a lot of talking except for explaining. We have a few minutes left, and we have, we've lost our quorum, even though probably members are still watching uh, from their TVs. But just briefly tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us, you know, where you um, went to school. You, sure. You've been involved in a lot of different things, so I want you to be able to tell. Yeah, and, and so I, let me ask a question. Did the committee receive a copy of the packet I sent to the Senate President's office? 
Now that I uh, I don't know I I can probably say for the the Republican caucus that it's it's, it's probably been passed around. I'm okay, sure that, that Senator I, I, I'm Adams glad I'll sure. be glad to leave this with the committee if if you all would like it. But yeah, please I, I'm a native Kentuckian. Um, I'm 61 years old. I'm married. Um, I'm going to touch on that here real quick for a second. When you ask questions about compromise and and well, let's just use the word compromise. I've been married for almost 42 years. If you don't think I understand the art of compromise. You haven't been married for 42 years. Um, I have two daughters. Uh, one lives in Indianapolis. She's an RN working for the uh, Marion County Department of Health as an um, uh, epidemiologist. She, she's a disease. She specializes in disease, disease, outbreak of disease tracking. Uh, my younger daughter, well, we all have that little problem, child, so we'll just move right on past her a little bit. Um, raising girls is not easy. Um, Lived in Jefferson County uh, all my life. My family were all farmers from Shelby and Spencer County. I own a farm in uh, Henry County. Ironically, it's outside the 3rd District. It's in the 5th District. Um, graduated from, well, went to a number of high schools and, and secondary schools in Louisville as a result of busing. Uh, probably really not relevant. I went to the University of Louisville for a while uh, until they kindly asked me well, they kindly informed me that I apparently had other interests at the time. Um, I retired from uh, John Connie Coffee Company, which actually was where that interest was lying at the time uh, with that conversation with the University of Louisville. And quite frankly, I probably got the greatest education in business that an individual could ever get by working for that company and, and for that gentleman. Um, I retired from there after wanting to buy the business. Uh, he didn't want to sell the business at the time. And um, it was just a good mutual parting of the ways. In turn, I came back and um, did two or three consulting jobs for him, getting him ready to sell I thought the company. You had, didn't you have military for some reason? I thought you no, were. No, I have no military I experience. I was thinking that you were um, military. I get accused of being a drill sergeant sometimes, but, right, but no, I have no, I have no military background. Um, let's see. Served as president of the League Kentucky Sportsman for three terms until I termed out. Um, I was nominated by Senator McConnell for the Udall Foundation, which I still serve on today in a what the federal government calls as a holdover status. My initial term is expired, but until either I say I'm finished serving or they reconfirm me or they bring someone else forward, I continue to serve there. And we, if you're not familiar with the Udall Foundation, but we work on, on issues of Native nations. Okay. We work on issues of Native nations. Uh, intergovernment uh, mediation. Uh, and then we also offer scholarships to uh, Native Nations peoples and those going into health care. Um, honestly, I'm an open book. So, you know, whatever you want to know, ask me. Um, I'll leave this with you. But uh, uh, as I said, my, I, have a, I have a background in farming. I own a farm today. I've converted all the tillable pastures uh, on, that, on that farm into wildlife habitat. All the, all the ponds have been renovated uh, to support, uh, you know, new aquatic species. We, I've got herons, I've got coarse fish, and I've got otters and migratory birds. And so all that goes to work. And, and, we, and I've had so some we, great mentors over the years. We certainly appreciate it. And I tried to, if you could tell, the pace of the first part of the meeting, yeah, the shooting those yeah. out of here, so this wouldn't happen, so we wouldn't run out of out of time. But uh, we're out of time. We've got other meetings we've got to go to. Understand. Please. The packet, I think, will be great. I'll leave it uh, for let's you. Let's make sure each one of the members gets a chance to take that packet, and then we will follow up with you uh, privately. Okay. Okay. I'll talk, we'll get with Julie, and then we'll get in stuff with you. And uh, with that said, any other questions? I just want to thank Mark for coming in. I've known him. I mean, he's he's legit, but and I appreciate <laughs> his work on state and federal issues. And, and let me say this, Senator. I understand all senators. I understand you all may have received comments. I'm not perfect. I'm human. <laughs> And, you know, when you're serving as the league of a, of a statewide or when you're serving as president of a statewide organization, you work at the behest of your of your districts, of your of your uh, uh, directors. And sometimes those directions were a little tough to swallow, but that was the job that they put me in place for. Um, again, you know, bad comments, negative comments. Uh, foul language. language. I just don't do question. that. Uh, Senator Southward has a quick question, if you don't mind. I just we... want to give a parting thought since I have not engaged in any questioning. Uh, I've been listening, uh, but I've gotten a lot of feedback from constituents and 
um, I've not heard one bad feedback and I was prepared to vote yes. And obviously we aren't able to pull that all off right now, but I just want to put that on the record since we're in the committee and almost all of my colleagues have left, but just so that everybody knows when we get back together and move this thing forward. Um, I've, I've heard all good comments and, and I have some of the people who have been involved, obviously part of my district is in Jefferson County now, but I represent a lot of other area as well around there. And it's just been a lot of good from all over. So I'm fully prepared to support you and look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. We'll just say, you know, this is a tough process for all of us. We get these candidates. It's a very powerful position, as you know, to be appointed to. So it has to have the due diligence that we give to it. But on our side, just like you, you, to, to find out about me, you get on and start trying to get all the information you can. Sure, I understand. And then you have all these other volunteers that want to send you stuff. And so just trying to plow through it to, to get a kind of an idea of somebody. And so uh, 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 hopefully I've made it clear. I, I don't hold grudges and I, I hold nothing that anyone has asked me today or maybe inferred that maybe perhaps I said or did or whatever. It's all fine and good. I understand the process. Well, very good. Listen, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And like I said, we will follow up with you personally. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor, sign of aye.